crypto users in South Korea now protected by the bill? The National Assembly has passed the Virtual Asset User Protection Bill into act on Friday, hence taking the country's first step towards building a legal framework for virtual assets. The legalization will take effect next year, as compiled from 19 proposals from lawmakers. It defines digital assets and sets out penalties for unfair transactions. Service providers are required to segregate user assets, ensure insurance protection, hold some reserves in cold wallets, and maintain records of all transactions. The bill empowers the Financial Services Commission to oversee and inspect a service providers. The Bank of Korea has the right to request data from service providers. Virtual assets have come under more scrutiny in the country following an investigation into domestic lawmakers' crypto holdings and last year's collapse of Terraform Labs. It may be recalled that the legislation was first unveiled in June 2022, a month after the collapse of the Terra ecosystem precipitated sharp falls in the cryptocurrency industry. Further, the collapse of tokens created by Dokon, led by the crypto market cash, which forced South Korea to enact its first independent digital asset bill to strengthen investor protection. After much delay, the Virtual Asset User Protection legislation, which unifies 19 crypto-related acts, was approved by Parliament on Friday. The bill defines digital assets and lays out the consequences of infractions, including using secret information, manipulating the market, and engaging in unethical trading methods. Chicago Board Options Exchange's BZX Exchange has decided to rope in services of crypto exchange Coinbase as market for its surveillance sharing agreement. This information was revealed by its refile spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund applications for several would-be Bitcoin ETF issuer on Friday. Fidelity, Wisdom Tree, Vanek, Arc Invest, Galaxy, Invesco, and BlackRock have filed for spot Bitcoin ETFs over the past few weeks hoping to succeed at launching a product amid hopes of benefiting from investors' interest for Bitcoin derivative products. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in the past has rejected such products citing inadequacy to meet regulatory requirements. While BlackRock filed with Nasdaq, the other companies are working with SIBO. On Friday, the SEC informed both Nasdaq and SIBO that their applications were inadequate because they didn't name the market that the fund sponsors are working with on their surveillance sharing agreements, according to the Wall Street Journal. In its refiled application, SIBO said Coinbase platform represents a substantial portion of US-based and USD-denominated Bitcoin trading as it named the US crypto exchange as its partner for this surveillance sharing agreement. The SEC has called for surveillance sharing agreements with markets of significant size in the past, arguing that this is necessary to prevent market manipulation or other unwanted behaviors and protect consumers. The lack of these agreements figure heavily into many of the SEC prior rejections of Bitcoin ETF applications. The regulator still has to formally acknowledge it is reviewing the application. The SEC will kick off an initial 45-day review period when it publishes the filing in the Federal Register, the national logbook, but can extend this to a total of 240 days. Hong Kong has established a diverse group of industry and government officials to look after the advancement of Web3 development in the region. The government of Hong Kong has formed a task force consisting of 15 industry participants and 11 important government officials to oversee the development of Web3 with a specific intent to promoting its growth in an ethical manner. Paul Chan, Hong Kong's financial secretary, said the task force would focus on Hong Kong's drive to be a top contender in the Web3 sector. Interestingly, Hong Kong government policy statement on the development of virtual assets has led to the favorable reaction from the market. It was earlier reported that over 80 virtual asset-related companies has shown interest in establishing presence in Hong Kong since the release of policy statement. The government of Hong Kong has recently expressed interest in making the region as an attractive destination for crypto firms. Recently, Hong Kong Legislative Council member Johnny, via his social media handle, extended an invitation to all global virtual asset trading platforms to come to Hong Kong and apply for a virtual asset service provider license. This move comes after the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission declared on May 23rd that it would soon allow licensed platforms to deal with retail investors. 
That's all in Web3 Diaries. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share, and subscribe to 3 Daughter TV. And for more updates, log on to our website www.3wordstv.io or scan the QR code.